Hey guys, it's Aaron Offroader here. It's been quite some time since I've done a bit of a run through of the Toyota Prado. So here it is. It is a 2018 model. It is a Kakadu. Um, so it's got a whole heap of gear on it. I'll start from the front. So let's go around there. If you haven't worked out already, I live up in Queensland now. So just in the Glasshouse Mountains, got this sort of backdrop around, quite local. So we've got the TJM T13 Outback Bar. So it's got 8,000 kilo recovery points built into the winch cradle underneath. So awesome bar in that regard. Uh, what have we got on the front here? We've got the TJM 9,500 pound winch. We've got the Nava 215 Mark II spotties. These are the new ones. So you can pull these black covers off. And then it's got the DRL in underneath it as well. So pretty simple, just rip them off when you want to do a bit of night driving. Uh, we've got the LED fog lights and the blinkers in there. We've got the bonnet protector. In the front here, there's actually not too much going on at all. I've just got rid of both batteries that I had in the front previously. Um, I've got a brand new AC Delco battery in the front here. Um, I think it's like 800 and something cold cranking amps. I've got a little battery monitor, a Bluetooth thing. Uh, the fuse block, which I actually melted. So the spotlights use a little bit too much power for this, so I'll be replacing that. I just run the Talking Metal Lockup kit, the UHF and I can't even remember what that other one is, to be honest. Uh, we've got the Ryko um, secondary fuel filter. Other than that, uh, we've got a winch isolator, big winch fuse. We've got um, a Red Arc Tow Pro as well. Um, just changed all the battery terminals and stuff like that. So there's not actually much else going on in there. The engine itself is all standard at the moment. The only um, performance things I guess you could say would be the snorkel, probably helps a little bit. Um, and then you've got um, the talking about a lockup kit. So those two things are pretty much the only thing done to the engine or transmission, which probably will be changing quite soon. I'll probably um, probably give a little bit of a tickle up soon no real reason behind it I just think it'd be a little bit more fun um, might get a bit of fuel economy out of it but the lockup kit helps a lot with fuel economy as well so the reason uh, I actually have that is I actually worked it out done a bit of maths got a bit nerdy about it um, saving approximately one litre per hundred which it does it was only going to take sort of 35, 40,000 kilometres for it to pay for itself. So, um, and then increased drivability, like it drives so much better, holds gears, doesn't drop and carry on. Uh, apparently the new ones with the 150 kilowatt engine, the transmission mapping is a lot better. So you probably don't need it on those models, I'm told. But 2017 to 2020 or whatever it is, definitely be look at getting uh, one of those on the front um, or underneath sorry you've got the bash plates so K on KDSS bash plates so the bash plates before I didn't really go into how far they went so obviously you got the front plates and then the transmission plate as well I have had in the past their um, transfer case guard it's a massive unit it goes from like say here straight across but it was actually something that I used to get hung up on all the time so hung down pretty much the lowest of anything and it's right in the middle of the car so it just seemed to ruin the ramp over angle so that's why this vehicle I haven't went with that uh, just the TJM side steps rails all 63 mil tubing it's quite good see so this is the kdss model being the kakadu which basically what that means is you have your big 
KDSS hydraulic sway bars. Yes, I have a leaking steering rack at the moment, so I'll be changing that soon. It's actually the first proper drama I've had with this vehicle, is this um, steering rack leaking. So, um, suspension wise, in the front here, so we've got the Cal Off Road adjustable upper control arms, we've got the TJM XGS 4000s um, coilovers here. So these have actually been really, really good, surprisingly. So, you know, they're a fairly budget item. They've just dropped a new range. I'm not too familiar with it, but um, these have been awesome. Literally no dramas with them. They just do their job. You don't have to adjust anything or, or play around with it. They just do the job. So I've had this car for about three nearly three and a half years yeah and it's it's been awesome it's been modified pretty much from from the start done approximately 80 75 to 80 thousand kilometers on it and the tires are starting to see better days but 75 to 80 thousand some fairly hard driving in there on mud tyres, they are doing quite well. Here we've got the um, window protectors, toy tough awning, so I'll rip that one out a little bit later. It's been absolutely pouring, I can't get over how good this awning is. It's got this extra flap on it, so you tuck it in up there, all the way across. Up here, corner, covered, a massive span on it. I'll take you around this side. So out here, I've got this flap set up. Three-footed monster, just holding that. All the water just runs down through this channel and out. That is sensational. All right, it is raining, obviously got work to do so this is made possible by having a 270 degree awning absolutely awesome a bit going on here at the moment moving a few files back up camera here camera there GoPro the fridge the couple of last coldies for the trip running low on the stock but yeah swagging it got the bar set up here Got uh, boys on the cook, so we've got a weather going on over this way. Oh, look at that. That is sensational. Got more trailers, got another weather going on over here. Let's have a look. Oh, jeez. Oh, it That's insane. What else have we got? Some more back up over here. Nick the master. Absolutely unreal. Got the brake lines, so these are actually a little bit longer for the two inch lift kit I have in this car. We've got the 315. 70, 17 on their method 315 race wheels. So they are a 17 by eight and a half zero offset. Um, we have a body lift in this car. So one inch body lift. It's not really too noticeable and I sort of wanted to keep it that way, but it was necessary for these tires. Also for the spare. That spare would not fit without a body lift. This spare's also got two wheel spaces behind it. So it's got 12 mil space in that off the standard mount. No other modifications done to get that on there. Uh, the rear bar, obviously that's mounted low where the chassis is. And then 
usually you'd see a Kmart bar, they would chop out all this and you would put a check, bit of checker plate in there. But this actually worked quite well. We were very careful how we done the bumper cut on this and we managed to actually keep that bottom section of the bumper. So all that's obviously the standard stuff there. Works extremely well. In the back here, you guys have seen this before, done a few run throughs on the back. Uh, 85 litre Bushman's upright fridge in the RV Storage Solutions Premium Alloy draw system. So extremely lightweight, it's got this whole surround, which is actually really cool. Uh, we've got the K-On shelf up the top there with the TJM compressor up, hidden up in there. Storage for lights. Got Kev, Kev up here. Got some patches, I've got patches all through this vehicle, so you'll see a fair bit of cool stuff sort of getting around. Fridge temp gauge got uh, all the auto inflation set up drawers it's a very quick look we have seen this all before little lock just in the back there got a full run through on the on the drawer system but this is my favorite drawer this top one comes right out awesome cutlery and all that Yeah, this is a new mod that you probably wouldn't have seen on this car yet. Is the new roof rack setup. Now, this has always been something I've wanted to upgrade for a very, very, very long time. So basically, what I had was the old roof rack off my last car. It was there, it was ready. It was sitting in the garage, so when I got this car, basically the rooftop tent went straight from one car to the other. I had the rails, and then I had the rack sitting at home. So that ended up all just going on just out of convenience, but then I ended up biting the bullet and getting the front runner slim one too. Now I am absolutely stoked with this roof rack. So I've actually slipped a solar panel up in the top here. It's a 100 watt and a drive molly crystalline panel so it's like a really good panel fits in there absolutely perfect um, i've got the shovel mount up here so it's a ratcheting type so it's actually really good so up top here it's really customizable where you put your slats so i've actually put a fair few more slats at the back to have this nice platform the table that slots in underneath that you would have seen at the back and then I think I had one spare and I had to um, actually have to put a bit, bit of support through that section so that's why I've ended up with two there but very very good got the Wolfpack Pro box up here so basically what I keep up in here now is my recovery gear so I've been caught out before having my recovery gear in the cab but Look at that straight up in there got a full kinetic snatch rope got all the um all the shackles um heap of soft shackles i've got the winch ring um and a winch extension so plenty of gear up in there and a um utility rope so it works really well these boxes very strong obviously waterproof sand proof Dust proof. So to lock them on, all you do is slot that on like that. Click it in. So two of those. Looks really well up the top here. You could actually um you could actually put a few up here. So if I can think of something else I want to put up the top there or I'll get another one because that is pretty cool. Um, so the reason I keep that up there is because I've been caught out before. So if you get bogged and you've got a bank sitting right up here and you can't open your door, I've been caught out because I've had all my recovery gear under here 
which you can't get to unless you open the door. So if you can't open the door, you can't get to your recovery gear, you've got an issue. So that's why I keep that up there now. You literally can never not get to that unless you flip it on its lid and then you've got bigger issues. Uh, if I put it up the top here and wind the window down, that sort of worked, but then you've got to have it all in the cab all the time. So it's quite good up the top there, and then I, when I get home from a trip, I just take it off, put it in the shed, um, and then it's all out of the car. Uh, what else have we got? I'm actually going to pull this rack off soon um, when I figure out what, what, um, what lights I'm going to go. I'd like some light bars along the front here, and obviously some camp lights would be nice on the back. So I've got all the switching for that already. So some little camp lights up in here would be pretty awesome. I've got the um, bottle opener up here. It's an essential. So the switches down here, rear lights, camp lights. I wouldn't actually mind a little light in here along this that section there or something because I have all that table that comes out, out here. Um, so I've got the air outlet at the back, so that's what I run the T-piece off for the two back tyres for the full air inflation setup, which I'm not sure I've really showed in detail before, but all you do is turn it on, and then it's like a service station, set your pressure. I've got an inverter up in here now, so a thousand watt inverter the remote switch down here just a junk section here which is quite messy at the moment got a red arc 40 amp core so this is their new dc charger it's 40 amps it's lithium compatible um and yeah it's sort of made for internal use only you can't put this one under the bonnet which doesn't matter because i didn't want to anyway so that works really well saved a bit of money then I've got the 200 amp lithium battery, as you can probably hardly see in here. It's all the power points and that. That is the 200 amp lithium battery, so that goes a fair way across. Just past there. This thing's been awesome. It's actually got a little readout underneath. So I've literally never seen this thing under like 70 percent um so yeah stoked it's done really well uh the plugs are literally just anderson plugs for the whole setup so that inverter was a was a kit i just bought so i just plugged it in ran the wires up to the back put the two positive and negative on ran that remote thing and that was it like it was such an easy install with that sort of battery um, underneath, so the rear I've just got the same sort of TJM XGS shocks, which you won't see in there. Nothing too fancy, but they just simply just work, same as the fronts. So we couldn't actually see underneath, so uh, I'm just going to raise the airbags up. So to do that, literally just come in the cab, start the car. Click that up, and then you'll see, sorry about all the dust, but you can see this section down here, it's going to high. So I'll just let that pump up for a little bit. You'll actually be able to see underneath. While we're at the back here, might as well talk about the rear bar. So it is a custom rear bar. You would have seen the build on that. It's actually a Kmar bar originally that's been ran into it's been in an accident before on the mate's car and i sort of got it for free so we started cutting it up we widened it so you see this double double kink there there and then around so it's quite well but i have hit it a few times we probably should have done the bumper cut 
a bit higher so there's a bit more of a gap because it does rub and I have had some issues with tail lights and popping the bumpers um, on some really hectic tracks but anyway and the custom uh, lights so these aren't actually flicking for my eyes in front of me right now but it looks like they are on the camera so um, yeah awesome tail lights 38 bucks a pair of eBay and they actually look awesome the uh, blinker is progressive as well so now that we can see under here see the airbag set up so three settings high right height and low two game shocks and then this is the KDSS sway bar this set up here so that is your hydraulic cylinder attachment to the diff housing and then the other side it's actually fixed so this this side doesn't move it's sort of the the mediator for the two and then this one does all the adjusting on road so it'll stiffen up in tight corners and then off-road it'll let it go loose a little bit so it'll let it articulate which is a pretty good system it's really strong like the size of those control arms are are crazy so got the reverse camera uh, relocation so that's actually a pretty good kit as well from Kaon so that wire the wiring for that reaches from the factory point you've just got to stretch it down a little bit down through there and then it just reaches to there and then you can adjust it you can see your um, tow ball too this is just a McHitch coupling so yeah obviously work for a trailer company um, signature camp trailers and this was a hitch that we used to use a fair bit they um, we don't use them anymore because they've closed this McHitch business just recently so usually the cruise master do a 35 or a Lovells new, new Lovells haul lace are the ones we use next time you see content on this vehicle probably be some more mods so I'm looking at I'm just waiting for a little bit but I'm looking at doing a full sort of rebirth on this thing so new tires maybe wheels I don't know I'm not gonna decide that yet or otherwise I'll give these ones a bit of an update they've got some new um, center caps and and black bolts for around the rings which I might try out might look pretty good uh, looking at doing all the lighting on the top which would be awesome uh, a bit of power so exhaust um, tune it's already got the throttle controller settings as a kakadu so it's got sort of three settings um, sport plus is the the top one um, what else am i looking at doing just a bit of tidying up on the rear bar because that's a bit of a mess new steering rack um, mud flaps on the back again didn't mention on the front here oh I've got the aftermarket grill so aftermarket grill on the front quite a cool sort of setup uh, they don't actually sell them anymore so I was quite lucky to even get that one when I got that one I've got a few battle scars as well so on the front here I could name a few of them this one is the barge going to Fraser Island so the Manta Ray barge bloke was guiding me come on come on keep coming keep coming and then I'm thinking oh this is getting really close and then bang he's guided me straight into the barge and I just looked at this bloke and just went are you serious um, and then got out and it was only that so it's you know not too worried about that it's a bit of a memory now down here this is all in the Simpson Desert uh, the French line so I went over this hard line went right to the top of this dune it was actually it was in the dark I remember yep it was in the dark so got up to the top and there was actually no track that continued down the back of the dune so it was either like you turn around and then go back but there was another sort of sneaky one that went down that sort of no one really took 
went down and then sort of jammed it into the bank on the other side of the track as I was turning. Scraped all that. Uh, see if I can name any others. This is, um, <laughs> this is Lithgow. So, went to drive up this, this rock. It wasn't moon rock, it was one of the ones. Um, just had a campsite there and just went smack straight into it. <laughs> Didn't have the approach angle for that one. Oh. <laughs> Come. If you start a little bit more this way and then turn into it, you'll probably have a bit more clearance. Uh, this side, can't actually name those ones, so. But I've never really dented the car. I've never put a big, large hit in it. I've done a fair bit of traveling in this thing. Um, so I'm pretty proud of that, to be honest, for all the things that we've done with it. So I never really had any major damage, um, but yeah. I was gonna clean up the interior all Mickey Mouse before I done this run through, but it's quite simple in here. There's actually not that much really going on because these are so well equipped to begin with, unlock 79. So, got all the four drive controls down here. High four, low four, center diff lock, rear locker, crawl control, which is awesome. The um, multi-terrain select, which is awesome. So you just press that and then adjust your settings. So you've got like rock, moguls, um, sand, mud, all that sort of thing. GME XRS 370 so definitely does the job my uh, radio is always probably the best in the convoy <laughs> whichever convoy I go with so I've either got the stumpy antenna or I've got the 1.2 6.6 the um, DVI oh, so I've sort of got that option whether I want to have that other one on there or not patches Got a fair few patches on the roof. So, yeah, new Ranger ones. And there's another one over the other side. I've got the little front runner. Metallic badge there, which is awesome, front and centre. Some of the places I've been, so Barkley, Mount Dare, Colgera. A few more over here. So, another Ranger one. Wycliffe Wells, Uluru, Stewart's Well, and Curtin Springs. As far as aftermarket mods, this is all sort of custom set up. So this is a little infill that you buy to get rid of the um, small square ones because they were really hard to get in the early days. We've got the driving lights, roof light bar, which isn't hooked up, the reverse lights, and this is the torque converter lockup kit. So this is a master on off. So at the moment it will lock the torque converter in at about 70 kilometers an hour and it won't unlock until 60. And then if I press this button here, it activates the low speed mode. So that drops the speed down. So it'll lock in at 40 and it will unlock at 30. So on the beach, I can actually get it to lock in in the soft sand. And then as long as I stay above 30 k's an hour, it will stay locked in and that just reduces all the heat out of the transmission, drives awesome, got good throttle response, you can get yourself out of sort of any dramas, so that is awesome there. You can actually pull the controller out and adjust some um, dip switches, and you can change the, the, um, the speeds that it engages at. I haven't actually really bothered with that, because it's quite good as, as it is. So, it's a Richards Auto, Electrical, full speed, automatic, torque converter lockup kit. It's a bloody mouthful, I know that. So that's all tucked up, up under there. It's got three big relays that it flicks through. I think the stock lock one 
might even be the go-to at the moment. It's, um, I think it's sort of more, more up-to-date system. As far as the radio goes, we are actually not running anything fancy here, so just got the standard Toyota radio. Now Apple CarPlay, don't really need it. I don't get too fussed on the Apple CarPlay. I'll just use the off-road nav. This is really good on the Toyotas, so as you can see, like you can literally, it picks up all the fire trails, everything. Pretty awesome. Got the quad lock mount up here, so just lock the phone on that never comes off and charge it so bang there you go charging so as far as the uh, front's concerned got the fridge or the cool box uh, heated seats just yeah charging up the front here pretty pretty simple sunroof so that's the, uh, that's the bottom of the roof rack right there. Solar panel. But still got a bit of, bit of a view through there. So anyway, that's the interior of this Toyota Prado. I hope you love it as much as I do. Uh, thanks for watching guys and see you on the next one. Basically, Aaron's, uh, Aaron's going to be ahead of us. We're going to hook the two cars up. There's going to be a snap, well, a um, kinetic rope between us. Um, uh, all he's doing is pulling the rope up at, at, at basically the early stages. I'm driving up as much as I can of this dune. Um, uh, once Aaron actually pops up and gets up onto the hard ground, well, that's pretty much bang on where I'm getting stuck. So as soon as he's up on the hard ground, he's got traction. He can just help pull through um, and basically help give us a uh, give us a pull through the rough stuff means we didn't need to go too fast we could have a much more controlled sort of pace um, wasn't quite crawling still needed to give it a little bit but yeah he had traction ropes on basically we've just you know doubled the pulling power and um and yeah away we go so the dingoes on fraser island there's only about 200 of them but you wouldn't think that because they're, they're always out on the coastlines you know searching around so they're always scouting out for something to eat um, and just hanging around they're actually